Okay, hello all you crazy people out there. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games and let's make some games. So in the last video, we got a number of things done actually involving uh, detecting when things are being clicked on, which I'm pretty happy about. Uh, so far that has only been applied to towers. As you can see, the towers are flashing. If I were to um, send in a wave, I would not be able to, to click on one of the bugs. I would just spawn a tower on top of their heads, which is a little rude. If I go into edit mode, so that I can like make a game editor or something, I should be able to do the same thing for for things that I click on here. Um, let's see if I'm... Oh no, okay. So the math isn't actually running for this. Well, in this video, we're gonna make the math run for this. So let's go over and, um, and look at what happens when you click the mouse. So this is in the, um, in gameplay mode, when the game is playing, when you click the mouse, uh, this code runs. First, you check to see if something is selected, and then you, uh, if something is if if something is under the mouse cursor when you click, I should say, uh, you will do something, which is currently nothing. Uh, and if there's nothing under the mouse cursor when you click, you will spawn a tower. And I would like to, um, I think I first order of business will be abstracting this away to something else. And I'm gonna call, I'm gonna make this a function called uh, let's say get clicked. And we will make the indentation over there correct. And instead of going directly to the all towers list, we're going to just have we're just gonna pass a list in as a parameter. I'm going to call it entity list, and we're going to check uh, everything in the entity list to see if there's something selected. Uh, I will also uh, instead of once again disentangling my code, instead of uh, modifying the selected entity variable itself, we will have a local variable. In this uh, in this method, and then return it when we are done. And now the same logic can be used for many things. Uh, not only not only uh, towers. What was it? Get clicked. Get clicked. And the uh, the list that it takes will be all towers. Um, I suppose we might as well make the. Uh, the ray evaluation part of that method also. Anything to uh, anything to save a little bit of uh, work in the future. All right, so this should work the same as before. I will be able to spawn towers, and I will be able to select them. Cool. If I have two somewhat on top of each other, or if I if I spawn one in front of the other to be better about it, I click on I click on the if I click on a region where both of them are in the uh, under the mouse uh, under the mouse, the one that is closest to me will be selected. Uh, same works for uh, other types of towers. Okay, that's great. Now I can reuse this for uh, edit mode. And instead of all towers, it'll be well all entities, I think. I feel like I should have, this includes all towers. This includes towers, right? Because those are rendered. I feel like I should have a separate list for um, for game entities. I'm gonna call it env. Because I don't, spell, I don't feel like spelling out environment all the time. So we're going to uh, actually, hang on, before I do any of that, before I do any of that, I should make a commit And it's really a function, not a method. So let's commit that, and then let's uh, continue where we were working. So all environment entities. And now that I think about it, it would make sense to um. It would make sense to use that list on save and load instead of uh, instead of all entities because that'll um, that'll save a little bit of work of saving undefined data when you try to, like, 
save a tower and a tower shouldn't be saved to the map file to be loaded back in because that doesn't make sense. So, um, when we get to that, I'll get to that. First, though, all env entities is what we're looking for. Uh, if, if such a thing exists that you clicked on, we will do something and we will be working in here today. Otherwise, uh, spawn one in. All right. This should also be a... Uh, the all entities list exists so that I don't have to like check multiple things for update and render and all that so that everything is in one list and can be treated the same. Um, environment entities exist so that I can uh, look at those specifically. Okay. And also, I suppose... That really should be a, that really should be a separate commit. I just want to make sure this is working first. So I'm going to spawn a couple trees and stuff. Uh, they're not going to glow because the glow code is currently part of um, render towers. Let's create one of those. I can't create multiple things on top of the same pumpkin, which is what I want. Um, same for the tree. Everything has the same bounding box. So even the little tiny flowers currently have a bounding box that is the same size of this, this thing over here, which is not really what we want. Uh, also, you can see I can spawn things on top of the tower because that is um that is not being checked for a collision right now. Um, you can see this has a, sh a few shortcomings, but honestly, they are shortcomings which I think I will be more than happy to actually work with because it's probably not worth the time to, to clean them up. Let's see. Firstly, click detection in editor mode. Uh, secondly, we will be doing what I said a minute ago and saving this. And later on, loading the same thing. We must add them to both to both lists. There might be a decent way to automate that so that you don't have to DS list add twice every single time, but um, not a uh, not a top priority right now. So let me. Let me test this. This shouldn't take too long. This should only take a minute to test. I'm going to place down a tower. I'm going to sp spawn in some, some foes. Um, I hit the tab key instead of the space bar. Let's now hit the tab key. And all right, so there's a, uh, there is some, there, there's like a, some kind of nature fiesta going on over there. And map.bug should be saved. Uh, in my data files. Okay, Windows Explorer. Of all the things that can be slow in Windows 10, I did not expect Windows Explorer to be one of them, and I have no idea why it's constantly the uh, the bottleneck when I'm working on stuff, more so than anything else. Bombardier, here it is. I wanted to save in there, right? I think I did. Now, uh, to load it, map1.bug. I think it's just called map.bug. Is it called map.bug? I don't think I added the one. <sighs> I think this is fun. Do you all think this is fun? All right, now, now it's there. They all loaded. Great, and that the towers and foes didn't. Wonderful, okay. That can be its own commit. Um, that's just uh, a little bit of a little bit of cleaner code. It only took about two minutes to get in, three minutes to get in, so I am happy with that. Now, just like the um, just like the towers flash when they're selected, I'm also going to make the environment entities flash. Other things like enemies, bullets are obviously not selectable. That there is no point to that. Um, but other things like enemies may look different when they're selected. Um, I'm going to replace the tower drawing code with that. And the flash code is going to stay there. Currently, nothing is like checking a bullet to see if it's currently selected, or if it can be selected by the mouse. But let's see if I, I'm not in edit mode. If I, if I click on you, excellent. That's exactly what I want to see. All right. I love how painless this is. I love it when things are painless. I'm going to be making a number of small commits, I think, as like maintenance. One, just in case this ever happens.
bullets will never be uh, will never be recasted. And uh, entity bullet. So this is always going to return false uh, if you click on a bullet. If it ever ends up in a list of things that are to be selected, it will always return false. I don't envision that being the case, but um, I can imagine accidentally checking a bullet for a collision could lead to some hard to track down errors. So I'm just going to go with uh, with this. Also, it's not really, I guess it could be an AABB, it could be a bounding box. Um, that is not something I feel the need to test because it's just a code that's never run. I guess you could set the uh, you could set the, the collision bounds variable of the bullet to undefined or something as well, but really the garbage collector will take care of that either way. Bullets don't live forever. It's not like it's a tremendous amount of memory being uh, used. Uh, the other thing I wanted to do. What was the other thing I wanted to do? There was another minor fix I wanted to make. What was it? It was relating to the. Uh, I think it was relating to the last one. I can't remember what was it that I wanted to do. I guess there's kind of the matter of loading the bounding box from a um from the model file. That'll be a that'll be a bit weirder. So I can say when I load a model, where is the model loading code anyway? Load model. When I do this, I could return some additional information in addition to just the model. Um, I could I could uh, also keep track of the bounds, which would really just be the uh, minimum and maximum x, y, and z of uh, of the model. That might not work. Later on, as part of the optimization session, um, I'm going to load these models from vertex buffers rather than rather than a, a game maker model file. And once I do that, the uh, the bounds will kind of be lost, and I don't really want to go out of my way to fix that too. Let's just okay. Environment entities are just going to have a smaller bounding box than everything else. Um, it's okay if they overlap a little bit to make things look a little more crowded. I'm going to make them 8, 8, 16. I think. So that should be a, a about a, approximately a cube. Um, if we go into edit mode, Selecting you, I can also spawn something very close, like sort of, sort of inside. Okay, um, a a proper like level editor might also be um, like it might it might highlight what your cursor is over, like every frame, even if you don't click. I could do that. That could become very expensive if there's a map with a lot of things in it, and um. And that's being checked every frame. For the editor, I care less about performance. I still care about performance because I don't want this to be like unbearable to use, but I care less than I um than I would for the actual game. What was the change to games.gml? Oh, that was just removing a new one. Alright, so I can disable this later if it if it ends up causing problems, but I can also do some things to optimize the um, the raycast function, which would also help uh, partitioning things, spatial partitions, and that sort of thing. Okay, but that's uh, I'm not going to do that now. That's one of the things that I will only do if it does indeed turn out to be a problem. Um, this is a bit of a misnomer, isn't it? Because it's not get clicked; it's just get under cursor. I will do a, uh, a, I will rename all instances of that in the code uh, to make it a little more accurate. Editor hover entity is going to be that. Um, so if you click, we will do a thing. Otherwise, we, otherwise we won't. Maybe we'll draw like the name of the entity that's uh, that's being hovered over on the UI or something. But that's probably not too important. Let me, um, this is only going to be relevant to environment entities. Let 
but we can uh, we can draw that. And also we can uh, we can somewhat expand the selected shader. And instead of uh, instead of going to specifically white, we can go to any color. Oops. Tower will need that too. So I'll drop that down there. And I'll make it like blue if you're hovering over it and, and white if it's selected, I guess. Or something like that. I'm not like decided on the colors. Um, let's make it green. Green is kind of nice. Uh, green is what? Red, green, blue, the middle one. And uh, one on the alpha channel for, for white. Okay, so if I come over here, or if I hover over it, it does turn green, which is more or less what I want. Um, the, the collision box for these things is quite small. That's honestly fine. I think it's about time where this, uh, this white sphere marking where the mouse is intersecting the floor goes away. I'll do that now. Where's render? That, I guess, would be in camera render. Uh, floor intersect. Okay, so instead of outward deleting that, I will comment it out. Probably later on, there'll be a tower building interface and it'll like draw a phantom model of the tower at the at the floor intersect position so that you can see where you're going to place something before you do it. Uh, that will most likely use similar math, which isn't like complicated. It's not like I can't rewrite this, but um, it'll give me a bit of a head start when I go back to it later. So now let's run the game. The annoying dot will be gone and it'll be uh, it'll be easier to see what I'm hovering over, I think. All right, you guys. That looks interesting when it fades to green. It fades from one green to the other green. The pumpkin is a. Uh, the pumpkin is much less interesting. Green plus orange kind of looks kind of gross. All right. So the next thing I want to do is not like make an entire fancy editor UI, but I do want to add some control over, like what, what you do with it. First, let's commit that. They'll be green if you hover over them, and white if you click on them. Is is where that's going. Let's see, uh, repositioning something is something you may want to do. Um, I will, and by the way, if I, if I do decide to add some kind of spatial partition later to speed up the raycast collision detection, uh, the fact that this is a single function that is called anywhere and will ideally be the only raycasting function, or perhaps one of two if I decide to do, if, if I decide to make bullets do a raycast also, the fact that there is only really one entry point to that will make changes to the collision system much easier. And um, hey, there won't be as many opportunities for code to like get out of date in weird places and stuff. OK. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the environment entity and give them another method, give it another method. Uh, and that's going to be reposition. And that's going to be an X, a Y, and a Z. And all that's going to do is collision dot uh, P1, 0 is going to be X minus. Actually, you know what? Um, position is already. Those are, uh, those are still, oh, those are points now. Those are, I, I changed those back from an array. What was the last one? 16, I think. 16. So other things um, besides like those don't have the ability to move around. Environment entities do. 
Um, I, th I believe that's all I need to do. These these are really kind of magic numbers, the size of the bounding boxes. I don't really care about that right now. Um, good enough is the name of the game for these things anyway. It's not even a real bounding box. If it was a real bounding box, I'd probably want to actually store the dimension somewhere. Uh, I am going to commit this change. And I am going to run downstairs to the kitchen because I need to check the status of something that's cooking and I will be back in two seconds. And I am back. The beans are doing fine. That's not like... They're slowly cooking, guys. It's not like I just left the stove on full blast while I came up here to talk at my computer. Okay. Reposition. So, um... To make this simple, if you are in edit mode and if something is under the cursor... Okay, let's do this inside out, because if uh, if you get to this point, the, the get under cursor function is running twice, and that's really not really what you need. So instead I will say if... If there's something under the cursor and you click, you will run this code. And if there's not something under the cursor and you click, you will you will spawn something, which is like this. Okay, and this this can be replaced with um, the entity the the entity that is that is already. There. Okay, so that is uh, that is somewhat nicer. No more doing the same work twice. Um, generally, good idea if you can avoid it. it makes everything run much more quickly. Uh, green, white, as it is selected. Okay. To reposition. Let's see. If something is selected, this is gonna be this is gonna be a bit of a mess. Let's collapse that. This, um, this might get a similar treatment to the spawn tower thing from before, a couple of videos ago, uh, when I moved the tower spawning code to its own method. I kind of want to keep the, uh, the editor code, like, away from all the other stuff. Um, I don't want it to be a mess of methods that are... I want most of the methods defined in here to be pertaining to, um, actual gameplay, as well as saving and loading, because that's kind of hard to avoid. Um... Like this is this is a section of code which I am mostly okay with being a, a mess, and it won't offend me because it needs to it needs to do a job. It it doesn't have to do it particularly well as long as it does it. I don't want to spend an infinite amount of time making a uh, making a making a level editor on video. As much fun as that would be, I would I, I would like to get these videos done before never. Anyway, if. And it might also be a good idea to, um, oh, I remember what I wanted to do uh, recently. So if something is selected currently and you change between, you change between game modes, uh, it will stay selected. So if I build a tower, if I select that tower and if I go into edit mode, it is still selected. Um, even though you shouldn't be able to have towers selected in edit mode. Um, I think where is uh where is the tab key when you change modes? When you change modes, I will just undefined that. Uh, the other the other way to tackle that would be to have um two variables. One for gameplay purposes and one for editor purposes. I don't really want to do that. I don't want to have a mess of variables around either. Um, this is safe. This is the only transition point between the two modes. So as long as uh, as long as the variable gets properly erased there, that's fine. Um, the tower stopped being selected when I entered uh, edit mode. If I select the tree and go back to gameplay mode, it stops being selected. Okay. Is that worthy of a commit? That's probably worthy of a commit. Actually, this will just general. This will be a general cleanup commit. Um, if so, next, if you hit another key, uh, for example, I don't know. Let's say I want to use the function keys mainly for uh, for edit editor stuff.
So keyboard check pressed, let's say VK F12. Let's just mark the entity is moving. And if the entity is moving, uh, we are going to reposition it to the current um, location of the mouse, which is camera dot get floor intersect. Okay, so this has some issues, uh, such as namely the is moving variable never being set to false, but it will uh, it will do for now. I'll take care of the issues later. Uh, F12, and the game crashed. And that is because reposition, okay, that does not take a vector. That takes a, uh, an XYZ. It could take a vector. I could change it to take a vector, but not a big deal. All right, let's try that again. Yeah, I was trying to add a basically a, um, a struct to a number. That obviously does not work. Okay, so I hit F12. This is now following my cursor around. And there's no way to set it back. Um, I suppose I could always... No, I can't actually select something else. Okay. I know an object.z not set before reading it. Oh, that's because... um. That's because it's... Undefined. If the cursor does not actually intersect the floor, that that function will return undefined. Okay, uh, we can also say we can we can toggle this. We can toggle that instead of setting it to true or false. We will also want it to uh, to do some things such as if you select something else. Uh, stop moving. Let's see. I can I can like leave you there. There we go. No, now you're no longer following the cursor. There's a few things. There is a a few things should happen when you get deselected. Uh, you should um you should ha you should have this turned off. I think I will make again for environment entities and not necessarily for towers and stuff because not many interesting things are going to happen when a tower is deselected. Um, I'm going to have a select function method and a deselect method. Select is going to set nothing right now. Deselect is going to set is moving to false. It's probably also going to do some other things later on. All right, it's gonna run the select method. Nothing happens in there, but it may in the future. Uh, where else is this variable set to? I also realize maybe, this is one of the downsides to not planning these things out before I sit down to record, which I do on purpose because most of the time it's interesting, but sometimes it does make extra work for me. Um, if you click on something, even if something else is already selected, that should take priority. Whatever was already selected should be deselected. All right. Let's see. If if you click. All right. Let me let me uh, kind of do surgery on this. All right. If you click. If something is selected, this is gonna run. I think. And. There are some number of mismatched curly braces there. All right, so if you click, if something is something is to be clicked on, select it. Else, and this is now redundant. Spawn something, and I think I just. 
Did I just delete a bunch of code? Okay, so let me kind of uh, reverse the uh, reverse the order here. So we're gonna start with if you click something, um, and we'll start with that. So if you click something, run all of this, or at least most of this. We'll filter out the stuff that's not needed later. Uh, so if something is currently being hovered over, select it. Otherwise, uh, if nothing is currently being hovered over, you are allowed to spawn something. And then, if nothing is clicked, um, this code will run. And we will have things happen to whatever is selected. Okay, I have turned that, I've turned that lovely uh, tree of if, else, and if, else is inside out. And I'm able to change my selection. If I hit F12, go and drag things around, we'll be able to drag things around. If I click something else, okay. It, it, this tree has been planted in place. The Pumpkin is now um, dragging around, and I can toggle that with. And I should probably like toggle that with a second mouse click or something. I don't know. No, that wouldn't work because that would go in here. I don't really feel like doing that. I'll just leave it as it is. As I said, the editor doesn't have to be fancy. It just has to work. Okay. Another thing you might want to do is um, like nudge things around with the arrow keys. So you can move things around with the mouse or you might want to like position them with the arrow keys. And I'm gonna be using the arrow keys and not WASD to make it harder to do by accident and also because WASD are for moving the camera. So that's gonna be That's going to be something like this. Uh, left is the other way, so that'll be minus one instead. Um, right would be plus one. That is not a minus, sir. All right, let's try that. So we can nudge things around. And that'll be rather slow, I think. Oh, that moves the camera also. Um, should I not make WASD move the camera around? Probably. Where are the camera controls? So, at the very least, that should be disabled in edit mode. You know what I can also do? I can use, like, the, the number pad arrow keys. I don't know how many people have, like, never stopped to think about this before, but... On at least some keyboards, I don't know if this is a thing on all keyboards, um, there are like uh, symbols on the keys and they say things like home and page up, page down. There's also arrows uh, with the left arrow on the four, the up arrow on the eight, the right arrow on the six, and the down arrow on the two as if you're kind of making a virtual D-pad out of the number pad. I will not overcomplicate this, but if you ever are in need of a, uh, a secondary or a really a tertiary WASD, the number pad is something you can use. Uh, however, I will not do that because I know I'm not gonna remember that and I'm gonna try and use the arrow keys and I'm gonna move the camera around instead and I'm gonna be confused. So up is gonna be minus Y down. It's gonna be plus Y. Um, yeah, was that what I wanted to do? No, stop. I hit the wrong keyboard combination. All right. <sighs> that should work for nudging things around. There's also the matter of rotating. Uh, I do not know if I want to mess with quaternions. I have a feeling the answer is no. So now let's nudge you around and you can. All right, up and down are wrong. Because as I said, up should be negative y and 
down should be positive y. Uh, there's also the matter of, of moving things on the z-axis, which I can do things with like page up, page down. Um, those are fairly common to use for, for this sort of thing. Okay. So we can move things on the z-axis with page up and page down. Um, for rotation, I would probably use like a modifier key or something on the arrow keys. Hmm. A, uh, a very hardcore game editor would ha would draw like a gizmo on the screen and allow you to drag it around that way with the mouse cursor. I am not going to do that math. Uh, instead, I'm just going to say if keyboard. Do these things even have rotation data? They do not. All right, I'll give um I'll give environment entities rotation data, and I guess also scaling data. Um, towers will obviously not have that. Why would you ever want to like have a tower rotated at like thirty degrees around the y-axis? That doesn't make any sense. Um, quaternions, for those of you who don't know, are a thing to get around some issues in rotations in three D space involving um, axes of rotation becoming aligned and uh, locking you off from moving in certain directions. Uh, that is a phenomenon known as gimbal lock. Quaternions are a four-dimensional data structure point in space, which are uh, kind of designed to get around that problem. I do not want to do quaternion math. That is a task for someone else. So instead, I'm just going to be doing rotations in three directions. If something gets stuck, that's, uh, that's too bad. I'll have a button to reset the rotation or something. Uh, anyway, keyboard check, VK, let's say shift. Control and no modifier keys can be regular movement. This is going to throw off the axis line bounding boxes. Uh, kind of by definition, the, those are not rotated. And I think since they're essentially just 16 by 16 cubes around the base of the objects, my solution to that is just going to be that I'm going to not address it. Um, Let's see. That is, rotation is apparently a reserved word because probably sequences is probably a variable meant for sequences. I'm allowed to use it. Um, the rotation is going to be zero, zero, zero. Scale is going to be one, one, one. That is going to be factored into rendering. And, okay, do I want to give them, um, do I also want to give them a method for a uh, rotate and scale or something? Not really. The reason the reposition method is here is so that the bounding box is updated when things move. Since I have decided I'm not going to deal with that for rotation and scale, I think I'm just going to allow those to be modified directly. Again, editor is allowed to have messier code than Editor is allowed to have messier code than game. Okay. And I will allow you to hit like F11 or something to um I will allow you to hit F11 or something to reset the rotation. All right. Let's uh, let's take that. It'll be easier to see rotating. Moving, shift, yep, we are, uh, control is not done. Oh, I haven't implemented control yet. Um, page up and page down are uh, rotating around the z-axis. Okay, perfect. Same thing will be done for scale, except instead of, that's going to make them explode in size very quickly, and if you don't believe me, um, every frame that you hit the, uh, the X button, the up button rather, uh, things are going to, what is it? Control. Yeah, that's exactly what you want. And also it doesn't allow you to have a, a fractional scale. Uh, that is zero. 
that is like three. There isn't a way to have like a 1.25 scale or anything. So that's gonna have to, you know what? Scale can be uniform. There's no reason for scale not to be uniform. I do not care enough to have non-uniform scaling. So we're gonna we're gonna scale things by 0 0.1 each frame. When you hit up, the whole thing is gonna be scaled up. When you hit down, uh, the whole thing is gonna be scaled down. Having um having non-uniform scaling is allowed. There's no technical reason why you shouldn't, but uh why why is the is the more relevant question. So um nudging you around, control, making you slightly bigger. Or at least well you we're still making you bigger, just not as fast, and um up and down. Okay. I guess a a backspace key might be what you expect for uh for resetting something. And that is when we are going to set the rotation back to back to its origin. And if you do it in the scale mode, scale is going to be set back to its origin. I guess it's um this should probably be capped at something. Just just to be like slightly reasonable. So you can't go above 10 on the scale and you can't go below 0 0.05 on the scale. Okay. That's a, that is a, that is a self-imposed limit. You need to hit the control key. So 10 times would be a very large pumpkin, uh, but it'll be something like, I wanna say about this. Are you allowed to get bigger? Did I mess up min and max? I think I messed up min and max. Oh, no, that's as large as it's allowed to get. Okay, even that is like unnecessarily big and um, making it smaller. It doesn't make much sense to make it like smaller than, even that's pretty generous. Let's make it four and a quarter instead are the bounds. Because honestly, why would you need something that huge? Unless you want to like make a specifically giant level where everything where you feel very small or something. All right, that's a big tree. And if I hit um, shift, no control backspace, it gets reset to normal. Uh, if I rotate it, let's rotate it a little bit around all three axes and hit backspace, it gets reset to normal. Okay, so uh, those work. That's some um, for. 50 minutes of work, that's some decent level design tools. Uh, I am happy with that. I do, however, there's a lot to remember, so I do want to draw some stuff on the UI, uh, like instruction text on the UI. First, I will commit these changes. I'll do it one by one. Uh, entities can have their scale and rotation. Scale can really just be a single value and not a vector three. Nah, who cares? Gain. Um, the other commit was uh, the other commit was that, and I'll draw some text. This is admittedly kind of hard to read on the sky in edit mode with the, the font that it has. Does everything look nice? I say I don't care if my editor looks nice or not, and then I spend like how long on this? An hour now? Okay. Uh, drawing instruction text on the screen. And the ability to, uh, well, I suppose there's always the ability to actually delete a thing. So I guess I'll put that on the next line. Uh, that'll be 128. To 
actually do that will be a bit of work. This is, can I collapse this? This is a lot of code, which is not very interesting. You could get rid of a lot of the curly braces there and it would still work, but I usually don't like to do that. All right. Deleting will remove a thing. And that is an unfortunately slow operation. Well, O of N twice, so a linear operation twice, but um, well, four times, I guess, if you count um, what removing from the list actually takes. DS list delete. So the DS list delete will allow you to delete a thing at a certain position in a list, and that position in the list uh, we do not have directly, so we need to find it with DS list find index and the selected entity. So take the selected entity, find its position in the all entities list, and delete that. It's not like it's not like ungodly slow. It's not like you're trying to run like an n factorial algorithm in, in the step event and you're only doing it when you hit the delete key. We would also like to set that to undefined because um otherwise it'll stay there and it won't be garbage collected or anything and it'll still be in the world. Well, it won't be drawn, but it'll still be in memory anyway. And I think that's um I think that's everything for deleting things. What are you complaining about? Unexpected syntax error. I don't think, oh, those are uh, colons instead of semicolons. So let's delete, let's delete something. We're in edit mode. We're not in edit mode. Um, I'm gonna delete you, you are gone. And that, that did it, okay. I'm not gonna do changing models now. My throat's getting sore. I need to go do other things. I need to go check on the beans again. Um, so I am going to commit this change. That's good. We've done most of the level editor there. Uh, we might as well also push that to origin, because why not? Uh, my name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. Um, the code for this is going to be in the video description in the GitHub repository. Check for the 0 0.14 release. Is it 0 0.14 or 0 0.15 now? It'll be 0 0.15 release. Okay, we're moving along. Um, I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute towards these videos being made, uh, links to that will be around. Otherwise, I try to post a couple game dev videos a week. There's one of these on Wednesdays and some other tutorials doing things with like 3D and Game Maker and some other stuff. That's it. I hope you found that interesting, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to David Key, Edward Holt, Indie Punch, Yona Guernsey, and Zenith for supporting these videos. If you want your name in the credits or to get a shout out at the end of every video, head over to the Patreon page in the video description to join the fun.